Hey guys, what's up? Hopefully uh, you saw everything as far as exams go. Um, put those up over the weekend. Um, looking pretty good overall. The class was pretty decent. Um, pretty pleased with how it turned out. So uh, keep uh, keep working hard. We're almost done. We got like three full weeks left after uh, after this hey guys, week. What's up? So hopefully uh, hopefully uh, you're gonna hang in there. Keep uh, working hard definitely gonna pay off and uh, we'll be done so we're going to work on some uh, more Laplace transform stuff uh, for the next couple of days today we're talking about operational properties first translation theorem second translation theorem solving an initial value problems with kind of funny right hand side like non homogeneous equations so uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty interesting and then we're going to try to get to some of the other properties of uh, Laplace transform, like uh, derivatives of a transform, convolution, direct delta functions, periodic functions, things like that. So I don't know if we'll get to all that today. We'll definitely get through these uh, two translation theorems, and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. So let's look at some operational properties, what they're called. So this is really the beginning of our section 7.3. So 7.3, that's really big. I think I changed it for grading. And uh, yeah, so 7.3 for us, operational properties. The first one, we're gonna call it the first translation theorem. So the first translation theorem. And the first translation theorem says that if uh, Laplace of f of t is equal to capital F of s and a is a real number then Laplace of e to the a t times f of t equals capital F of s minus a. And I've never done this proof before. And the second takeaway is e to the at causes a shift in the s domain so if this was f of s this would be maybe f of s minus a. Yeah, but to do Laplace transform, I don't want to absorb the s and t into the same variable u. I would still want to have like s separated from u. I'm not sure if that if that makes sense. I want to keep uh, S and U separated because I still want to uh, like, basically I want to replace T with something in terms of U, but not, I, I don't want to keep the S. I don't want to replace the S. Probably what I need to do I'm not gonna worry about it anyway we'll uh we'll just kind of skip that for now so that's uh that's my bad should have uh should have not winged that one. 
uh, so basically this first translation theorem is a shift on the s axis so you just write it down when you multiply your function f of t by e to the at that will shift f of s on the s axis to s minus a so it's a shift in the s axis when you multiply by e to the at for example for example let's say we had something like uh, f of t equals t cosine t and we could either look it up in the table or do it by hand but the Laplace transform would be s squared minus 1 over s squared plus 1 squared so then Laplace of something like e to the negative t times t cosine t would take the Laplace transform f of s and here we have a equals negative 1 so if a is equal to negative 1 then we would shift f of s to s plus 1 so capital F of s plus 1 so basically every s in capital F of s is going to be replaced with s plus 1 so this is going to be s plus 1 squared minus 1 over parentheses s plus 1 squared plus 1 squared so that would be the Laplace of e to the negative t times t cosine t. So that's the first translation theorem. If you multiply by exponential, it just shifts your Laplace transform on the s-axis by a. In this case, a was negative 1, so we shifted it to s minus negative 1. Well, that's just s plus one. All right. So, sorry about the uh, sorry about the screw up there at the beginning. Um, I'll make maybe like a separate video later and go through that derivation. So the step function. Let's see. The unit step function. The unit step function, let's see, we're going to define something called the heavy side function, h of t is equal to, uh, we'll call it 0 for t less than a, and then we'll call it 1 for t greater or equal to a, and a is greater or equal to 0. And we call this thing the heavy side function. Which I believe is a guy's name, so we'll call it the heavy side function. Um, then we define u of t minus a to be equal to h of t, where u of t minus a graphs something like this.
So it's zero until you get to A, and then it's one after that. So it's zero until you get to a, and then it's one after that. And that's what we call the unit step function, u of t minus a. So that's going to be a function we use quite a bit in our Laplace transform stuff. So u of t minus a is like a, like a light switch. So that's, that's the way I like to think about it, is u of t minus a is like a light switch. u of t minus a acts like a switch. So once you get to a, it turns on, and then it stays on after that forever. So that's what uh, that's what this function is going to do. It's basically going to be like a switch. It's going to turn on whatever it's multiplied by uh, whenever we get to a. So whatever a is tells us when to turn on the switch, and then after that, it stays on forever. Okay, so let's look at uh, what this thing might do to different functions if we multiply functions by a unit step function. So what happens? if we have maybe unit step function t minus 2 times a straight line y equals t. So it's just a question. What happens if we have something like this? So let's think about this. Normally, we just have this straight line equation, y equals t. But our function is not going to turn on until we get to t equals 2. So it's actually 0 until we get to t equals 2, and then it becomes the function y equals t. So the function u of t minus 2 times t is graphed in orange. So it's like a light switch. It turns on the function y equals t once you get to t equals 2. So, so the answer is u of t minus 2 times t is 0 until we reach time t equals 2, then we are the function y equals t. So the unit step function is like a switch. It turns on whatever function it's multiplied by once we get to a. So then the graph would look just like this. So does that kind of make sense, what this unit step function does? It's just like a switch. So another question, what happens? If we have u of t minus a times f of t minus a, uh, let's say u of t minus a times, uh, we'll say t minus a or t minus 2 squared. So we'll do t minus 2 in both of those. So what would that look like? Again, think about what the graph would kind of look like. Mm. 
Well, we're zero until we get to two, right? So u of t minus two times t minus two squared is zero until time t equals two. And then it's y equals t minus two squared. So normally we would see like half a parabola, you know, if we were to start right here, we'd see y equals t squared, but we're shifting this over to t equals two. So let's say t equals two is right here. So our function is actually zero until we get there. And then we become y equals t minus two squared. So that's what this uh, u of t minus two times t minus two squared would look like. It keeps everything zero until we get to two, and then since we shifted our function over to two, it's like it's just a parabola that turns on right there. So normally we would see you know, this parabola, which is way up here, but we shifted it over to the right, so actually we start at zero on the parabola and then start to go up just like the parabola normally would if we had started it at zero. But because we shifted it to the right by t equals two, then we uh, start on the t-axis with our parabola. So that's something else we might wanna do is we don't wanna start away from the axis, we wanna start on the axis. So then we just shift our function to whatever point the unit step function starts at. So that's what this unit step function can do for us. It can, it can just keep off whatever function until t equals a, or we can actually also shift our function to t equals a, and then they both start at the same time. When t equals two, then it's like uh, the function starts where we wanted it to, and it turns on at t equals two at the same time. So, <clears throat> all right, let's, uh, let's look at one result. So note that Laplace of u of t minus a would be equal to e to the negative s a over s since integral from zero to infinity u of t minus a e to the negative s t dt would be equal to, well, this function is zero until we get to t equals a. So actually we say, okay, from a to infinity times one e to the negative st dt, right? Because this unit step function is zero before we get to t equals a. So then we go over to t equals a and integrate from a to infinity because from zero to a, the unit step function is zero. And this becomes negative one over s e to the negative st from a to infinity, which is gonna be negative one over s e to the negative infinity plus one over s e to the negative a s. So that's how we get uh, this Laplace transform right here. And we're gonna use that uh, more or less to kind of introduce the next translation theorem. So the next translation theorem, we'll see this e to the negative as, or e to the negative sa pop up. And it's basically because of the unit step function. And it's basically like here, the unit step function is being multiplied by one. So we have one over s. So it's, uh, it's a shift in the t domain which produces a different Laplace transform, a Laplace transform multiplied by an exponential, and that's the second translation theorem. So the second translation theorem and it has a couple of parts here. 
Um, we'll call it the first form, the second form. It's the same. It's the same theorem. It just has two different forms. So we'll call it the first form. And the first form of the translation theorem, it says that if f of s equals Laplace of f of t, and a is greater than zero, then Laplace of f of t minus a times u of t minus a equals e to the negative a s times f of s. And then the second form of the translation, the second translation theorem says, so we'll call this one part A, we'll call this one part B. It says the plus of function g of t times u of t minus a equals e to the negative a s times the plus of g of t plus a. So they really say the same thing. So these really just say the same thing. But we'll call it two different forms because one is more useful when you're going from S to T and then the other one is more useful when you're going from t to s. So this one's more useful when you're going from um, s to t, when you're going backwards, so s to t. And then this one is more useful when you're going from t to s. So when you wanna take Laplace transform, usually you use part b, and when you wanna take inverse Laplace transform, you use part a usually. So this is better for inverse Laplace, and this is right better for um, just Laplace transform. All right, so for example, what we can do is we can take our function and rewrite it in terms of Laplace transforms, or sorry, in terms of unit step functions, and then take its Laplace transform. So example. Uh, let's see, find Laplace transform. So find Laplace of f of t equal to one negative two, two, and it's one over the interval from zero to three. It's negative two over the interval of zero, three to five, and then it's two over the interval five to infinity. So find Laplace of this uh, function, piecewise function. Now we could do this using the definition. We just have uh, three integrals integral from 0 to 3, integral from 3 to 5, integral from 5 to infinity. But we're going to find the plus of f of t using step functions, so using unit step functions. So we're going to find the plus using unit step functions. So what we need to do is rewrite our function in terms of unit step functions. So solution. We will express f of t as an addition 
and subtraction. of unit step functions. So what we can do is we can actually say that f of t is going to be equal to 1, and that's going to turn on at u of t minus 0. So we're going to be 1 until we get to t equals 3, so we'll say minus u of t minus 3. So how can I say that? Well, at t equals 0, this is going to become 1. So the first part equals 1 for t greater than 0. The second part equals 1 for t greater than 3. Greater or equal to 3. Greater or equal to 0. So when they both turn on to 1, then it turns to 0 because I'm subtracting them. So then what we can do is we can say, okay, plus, or actually minus 2 times u of t minus 3 minus u of t minus 5. Again, the same thing. Here, this is going to equal 1 for t greater or equal to 3, which means we're going to have a value of negative 2 because the first one is 0. And then this second term is going to equal 1 for t greater or equal to 5. So once I get to t equals 5, this one's also 1, and I get 1 minus 1, which is 0, which means this whole thing is going to turn off at t equals 5. And then plus 2 times u of t minus 5. And that just turns on at t greater or equal to 5. And then we stay positive 2 forever after. So I've completely rewritten this function in terms of unit step functions. Does that make sense? So if I'm subtracting them when they're both 1, then the subtraction goes to 0 and it turns off that piece of the function. So it's just a way to write a piecewise function in terms of unit step functions. And now what we can do is just uh, we can combine these based on their unit step functions. So that's 1 times u of t minus 1 minus 2 would be minus 3 u of t minus 3 so plus 2 plus 2 would be plus 4 u of t minus 5. So just collecting like terms in terms of the unit step functions. And now I just have to take the plus of this combination of unit step functions. So then the Laplace of these will be, so Laplace capital F of s we'll call it, capital F of s would be equal to well, the function 1 Laplace transform is 1 over s, e to the 0, s, minus 3 over s, e to the th uh, negative 3 s, plus 4 over s, e to the negative 5 s. Because we have to think about each case, okay, here a equals 0, here a equals 3, and here a is equal to 5. I don't really have to do the uh, g of t plus a part because 1, when I shift it to t plus a, it's still 1. Same thing for negative 3. When I shift it to t plus a, it's still negative 3. And 4, I shift it to t plus a, it's still 4. So constants don't really get shifted whenever you do the t plus a. Uh, let's 
see, I probably should have put just a less than sign right here, Caleb, and an equal sign right here. It's not really a big deal because it's just at a very, like, it's just at an instant in time. And so the fact that it happens right at five or any time after five is like virtu virtually indistinguishable. So, but yeah, to be more precise, I should have put the less than in the middle and the greater or equal at the end. So good question. Let's look at another example. So another example. Find the Laplace transform. And our piecewise function f of t is a little more complicated. It's going to be t if t is between 0 and 1. Uh, strictly less than 1, and then it's going to be 2 minus t for t between 1 and 2, strictly less than 2, and then 1 for t greater or equal to 2. So... I would not prefer to use the definition on this one, that's for sure. A lot of integration by parts going on. So we will use the unit step functions. So let's use unit step functions to find Laplace transform. So solution, let's rewrite it in terms of unit steps. So f of t is going to be t times u of t minus 0 minus u of t minus 1 plus 2 minus t times u of t minus 1 minus u of t minus 2 plus 1 times u of t minus 2. So that is our expression or our function written in terms of unit step functions. Again, think about it at u equals or at t equals zero, uh, u of t minus zero becomes zero. Or sorry, it becomes one. And then when I hit t equals one, this is also one. And so this one is a one, this one's a one, one minus one becomes zero, and that part turns off. So that turns off the t equals or the y equals t part. And then when I get to t equals one right here, this turns on to one, this We'll wait until t equals 2, and this will turn on to 1, and then they subtract and give me 0, and then this part shuts off. So it's a really clever way to write your function if it's a piecewise function. So we distribute collect like terms in terms of their unit steps. So this is going to be t times u of t minus 0. Let's see. This is going to be plus, and then we have 2 minus t minus t, u of t minus 1, because there's a minus sign on that u of t minus 1 to the left. And then the t minus 2 can factor out, so we'll get uh, 1 minus, and then 2 minus t times u of t minus 2. Whoops, this should have been t minus 2. So just doing a little algebra there to factor out the u of the unit step functions from their terms. So this is going to be t times u of t plus 2 minus 2t two times u of t minus 1. plus, let's see, 3 minus t times u of t minus 2. So 
So now we need to take the Laplace transform. So Laplace transform of f of t means take Laplace of t times u of t plus Laplace of 2 minus 2t two times u of t minus 1 plus Laplace of 3 minus t times u of t minus 2. Well, the first one, a is equal to 0. So again, here a is equal to 0, here a is equal to 1, and here a is equal to 2. And let's just remind ourselves of what the second translation theorem said. It said Laplace of g of t u of t minus a is equal to e to the negative as times the plus of g of t plus a. So let's use that. Again, the first one, t plus 0 is still t, so I don't really have to do any shifting for the uh, g part for the first one. So it's just going to be e to the 0, negative 0s, zero times 1 over s squared, because that's the plus of t. So it's really just 1 over s squared. The second one, though, is going to be plus e to the negative s, the plus of 2 minus 2 times t plus 1. And then the same thing here, e to the negative 2s, the plus of 3 minus t plus 2. Because I'm doing uh, that function, t is replaced by t plus 2. All right, so this is going to give me 1 over s squared plus e to the negative s times the plus of 2 minus 2t two minus 2 plus e to the negative 2s plus of 3 minus t minus 2. Let's see, we get some things to cancel a little bit. So this 2 kind of cancel. 3 and 2 is going to give me 1, so that's 1 minus t. And now just take Laplace of those. So this is going to be 1 over s squared plus e to the negative s times Laplace of negative 2t is going to be negative 2 over s squared plus e to the negative 2s times Laplace of 1 is 1 over s minus t, which is 1 over s squared. And so that is our Laplace transform of this step function, or sorry, this piecewise function. See, I feel like I made a radical mistake somewhere. I think I did. Right here with this. Uh, should have been 2 minus t. Right there. So that should be 2 minus t. Which should be t minus 1. So this becomes t minus 1. And this becomes another one of those days. 
So this becomes uh, t plus 2 minus 1. And then this becomes t plus 1. And then this becomes 1 over s squared plus 1 over s. Oh, man. Sorry about that. So that is our Laplace transform of this piecewise function. Definitely better than using the definition um, most of the time, I guess. Unless you're making mistakes like this, and then, you know, I don't know. Sorry about that. Pretty frustrating, sorry. I'm trying to try to get my A game back. I'm working on a C game right now. It's not good. Let's look at solve an initial value problem with uh, unit step functions on the right hand side, basically non-homogeneous problem with the unit step function. So example. Actually I'll pause to see if there are any questions while I write up the example. So solve. IVP and it's y double prime minus 4y equals unit step of t minus 1 where y of 0 is 1 and y prime of 0 is 0. So let's just uh, do a quick recall that uh, Laplace of y prime, or sorry, yeah, y prime of t would have been s capital y of s minus y of 0, and Laplace of y double prime of t would have been s squared y of s minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0. So just a recap from last time. Any questions? Any questions? All right, let's try to solve this initial value problem using Laplace transforms. So that's a that's a piecewise function on the right hand side. It's zero until we get to one, and then it's one until we after we get to one. So it's a it's like a switch. It's like a jump. It's a step. It's a like okay. There's no current, and then bam, at t equals one, there's a constant current. So you can kind of think of that as like what this uh, Laplace could represent. So this is uh, extremely useful, obviously, in circuits and things like that. So let's look at the solution to the differential equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to do Laplace of y double prime minus 4y equals Laplace of u of t minus 1. And we know that both of those Laplace transforms now on the right and the left. So that's going to be s squared capital Y of s minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0 minus 4y of s equals e to the negative as over s. So that's our setup. Laplace transform of y double prime is in the parentheses here, minus 4 times the plus of y, which is just capital Y of s. So what are we going to do? Let's plug in our values for the uh, initial conditions and then simplify. So we get s squared y of s, and I'll say minus 4y of s, just kind of want to collect those together, minus s times 1 minus 0 equals e to the negative as over s. So let's see if we can move some things to the right hand side. So factor out y of s on the left, so that's going to be y of s 
times s squared minus 4 equals s plus 1 over s e to the negative a s. So that gives us almost capital Y of s. So let's divide both sides by s squared minus 4 to get capital Y of s by itself. So capital Y of s is going to be uh, s over s squared minus 4 plus 1 over s times s squared minus 4 e to the negative a s. So I actually have two fractions that I need to break up into these partial fractions. So we need to break up each fraction, break up each fraction into its partial fractions, into partial fractions. separately. So we want to do these separately. So let's look at that process. So s over s squared minus 4. We'll rewrite that as capital A over s minus 2 plus capital B over s plus 2. It's a difference of two squares in the denominator. So that's the first one. Let's see what happens. We get s is equal to a times s plus 2 plus b times s minus 2. And let's say s equals 2. Then we get 2 equals a times 4. So a is going to be 1 half. And if s equals negative 2, we get negative 2 is equal to b times negative 4. So b is also 1 half. So both of those are one half right here. So I'll change those. This is going to be one half. And this is going to be one half. And then let's look at the second set of, or the second fraction. One over s times s squared minus four equals uh, a. Well, let's see. We actually should probably use different letters. We'll call them c, d, and e. So c over s plus d over s minus 2 plus e over s plus 2. So it's a different set of partial fractions. And cross multiply that denominator, we get 1 equals c times s squared minus 4 plus d times s times s plus 2 plus e times s times s minus 2 and all the work later we'll get uh, c equals negative 1 fourth d equals 1 over 8 and e equals 1 over 8 so I'm going to skip a few steps in this partial fraction decomp but I trust uh, you can handle it So that means if we go back to our problem, that capital Y of S can actually be written as 1 half 1 over S minus 2 plus 1 half 1 over S plus 2 plus e to the negative AS times negative 1 over 4 1 over S plus 1 over 8, 1 over s minus 2, plus 1 over 8, 1 over s plus 2. So that is our capital Y of s. And we did that so that we can take the inverse transform. So to get y of t, take the inverse transform, which is going to be 1 half e to the 2t plus 1 half e to the negative 2t. And that's actually what we would expect from our homogeneous solution. So 
if you were to go back and look at just the homogeneous part, you get m squared minus 4, m equals plus minus 2. That's our homogeneous part. But we have this other stuff. And now we're going to use the second translation theorem, part A, to go backwards. And this E is going to turn into a U of T. Sorry, I lost my A. What is A? A is 1. <laughs> A is 1. I should have uh, put that in here already. A equals 1. So that's really A equals 1. And so that's really t minus 1. You have t minus 1. And then times negative 1 over 4. And 1 over s is going to go back to 1. So that's just going to stay negative 1 over 4 times 1. Don't really have to shift that one. But the next one, 1 over 8. Normally this would go back to e to the 2t but I have to go back to e to the 2t minus 1. Right? Normally it would go back to e to the 2t, but because I'm using the second translation theorem, part a, it goes back to e to the 2t minus 1, plus 1 over 8, e to the negative 2t, but here we go, t minus 1. So just uh, right at the second form of the translation theorem that we were using one more time and that is that basically we'll write it in inverse transform notation as Laplace inverse of e to the negative a s times f of s is equal to u of t minus a f of t minus a So that's basically what we're doing right there, is to take those inverse transforms. It's probably better to write it in terms of an inverse, Laplace inverse equals. So just using the second translation theorem in reverse, part A. And so that is our solution. That's it right there. So we have this piece that is our homogeneous piece. And then at t equals 1, right here, we get a new piece of our solution. It's like, OK, the current jumped on. What happens to our solution after that? So we start adding all these other terms in the parentheses after t equals 1. So our solution changes at t equals 1. So I'll pause, see if there are any questions. Okay, let's look at maybe another initial value problem here. Probably the, the most tedious part is the partial fraction decomposition. So if you can do the partial fraction decomposition and remember your Laplace transforms, you should be pretty good. Um, so that's usually the most time consuming part is the partial fraction decomposition. And this problem that we're about to do has uh, quite the partial fraction decomposition. So let's look at it. Uh, it'll be our last example for this section, but it's a very long initial value problem because of the partial fractions. So let's look at uh, one more example here. Solve the IVP. So solve the initial value problem. Y double prime plus 5Y prime plus 6y equals f of t. And here f of t is a piecewise function. And that piecewise function is 1. 
if we're between 0 and 1. It's 2 minus t for between 1 and 3. And t minus 4 if we are between 3 and infinity. So we also have some initial conditions y of 0 equals negative 3 and y prime of 0 equals 1. So here's our initial value problem. It seems very uh, very strange to have such a complicated uh, non-homogeneous part, f of t. So here f of t is a very um, very difficult part to handle. But Laplace really says, I don't care. I can do it anyway. Just write it in terms of unit step functions, and I can take Laplace. So the solution, of course, we're going to have to rewrite our function f of t in terms of unit step functions, and then take Laplace of the whole equation. So f of t can be written as 1 times u of t minus u of t minus 1 plus 2 minus t times u of t minus 1 minus u of t minus 3 plus t minus 4 times u of t minus 3. Again, we want to simplify that, collect like terms, and I think I'm going to just skip the algebra. And then we should end up with something like u of t plus 1 minus t times u of t minus 1. plus 2t minus 6 times u of t minus 3. So that's our right-hand side of our differential equation, basically. a equals 0, a equals 1, a equals 3. And then, uh, of course, we want to remind ourselves of what the translation theorem says. So the translation, second translation theorem, part B, basically. Said that Laplace of u of t minus a times g of t be equal to e to the negative a s times Laplace of g of t plus a. So let's first calculate Laplace of f and then look at the differential equation. So this is going to be 1 over s because I have a equals 0, so it's e to the 0 times 1, Laplace of 1 at least. And then the next one is going to be e to the negative a s, or e to the negative 1 times s, so e to the negative s. Laplace of 1 minus, here we have t plus 1. And then the last one, e to the negative 3s times Laplace of 2 times t plus 3 minus 6. And this Laplace turns out to be 1 over s plus e to the negative s times, let's see, that's going to be Laplace of negative t. So Laplace of negative t plus e to the negative 3s times Laplace of 2t plus 6 minus 6 is just 2t. 
So this turns into 1 over s plus e to the negative s times, actually I should say minus e to the negative s times 1 over s squared plus e to the negative 3s times 2 over s squared. So that's the plus of our piecewise function, our forcing function. So now let's look at uh, let's look at the differential equation. So now the plus of y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y equals f of s. So what would that tell us? That would tell us that s squared y of s minus s times negative 3 minus 1 plus 5 times s y of s minus negative 3 plus 6 y of s equals 1 over s minus 1 over s squared e to the negative s plus 2 over s squared e to the negative 3s. Now on the left let's collect like terms for capital Y. So capital Y of s is going to give well, capital Y of s times s squared plus 5s plus 6 plus 3s minus let's see minus 1 but then plus 15 it's going to be plus 14 equals 1 over s minus 1 over s squared e to the negative s plus 2 over s squared e to the negative 3s. Uh, so, goodness. What's going to happen here? We're going to have to move these terms on the left without y, capital Y of s. We're going to have to move these, let's see, move these two terms right here to the right hand side, and then divide by the coefficient of capital Y of s. So, capital Y of s times s squared plus 5s plus 6 equals 1 over s minus 3s minus 14 minus 1 over s squared e to the negative s plus 2 over s squared e to the negative 3s. And now divide both sides by s squared plus 5s plus 6. So now divide both sides by s squared plus 5s plus 6. So we do that and we simplify We'll get capital Y of S is equal to negative 3S squared minus 14S plus 1 over S times S plus 2 times S plus 3. It's basically how we factor that term. And then minus 1 over S squared times s plus 2 times s plus 3 e to the negative s 
plus 2 over s squared times s plus 2 times s plus 3 e to the negative 3s. So getting close, we have to find the partial fraction decomposition. But notice two of them are pretty much the same. If you were to write this two right here and put a one right there, the last two partial fraction decompositions are actually going to be the same. One of them has a negative one multiplied onto it. The other one has a two multiplied onto it. That's the only difference in those two. So really we just have to do two partial fraction decompositions. So this is going to be our first one right here, and this is our second one right here. So let's look at negative 3s squared minus 14s plus 1 over s times s plus 2 times s plus 3. We'd break that up as a over s plus b over s plus 2 plus c over s plus 3. Okay, go through, cross multiply, we get negative 3s squared minus 14s plus 1 equals a times Really, it's s squared plus 5s plus 6 plus b times s times s plus 3 plus c times s times s plus 2. And then some work. I'm going to skip a few steps and we get a equals 1 over 6b equals negative 17 over 2, and c equals 16 over 3. Again, you can go through, verify uh, the partial fraction decomposition. It turns out to be this. And so our coefficients are 1 sixth, negative 17 over 2, and 16 over 3. So I'm going to change those right here. That's 1 over 6, negative 17 over 2, and 16 over 3. So that is our partial fraction decomposition for the first one. The second one, and really the third one as well, uh, that's going to be, let's see, 1 over s squared times s plus 2 times s plus 3 would be broken up as um, we use d over s plus e over s squared plus f over s plus 2 plus g over s plus 3. And again, I'm going to skip all the work. But d turns out to be negative 5 over 36. e is 1 over 6 f is 1 over 4, g is negative 1 over 9. So those are our partial fraction decompositions. And what we are going to do is replace those fractions with their partial fractions. So capital Y of S can be replaced with 1 over 6 times 1 over S minus 17 over 2 times 1 over S plus 2 plus 16 over 3 times 1 over S plus 3 plus or minus. e to the negative s times negative 5 over 36 1 over s plus 1 over 6 1 over s squared 
plus 1 over 4, 1 over s plus 2, minus 1 over 9, 1 over s plus 3. And then over here we'll say plus 2 e to the negative 3s times negative 5 over 36, 1 over s, plus 1 over 6, 1 over s squared, plus 1 over 4, 1 over s plus 2, minus 1 over 9, 1 over s plus 3. Oh, quite a bit, quite a bit. Now we take the inverse Laplace transform of each one using the second translation theorem in reverse to get y of t. So y of t is going to be 1 over 6 times 1 minus 17 over 2 times e to the negative 2t plus 16 over 3 e to the negative 3t minus u of t minus 1 times negative 5 over 36 times 1, and that one doesn't have to be shifted because it's just a constant, plus 1 over 6 times, normally that would go back to t, but here we're going to go to t minus 1. All right, so just to kind of highlight this, this goes to t, which goes to t minus 1, since it's multiplied by the exponential. So that's a uh, second translation theorem in reverse, plus 1 over 4. And this would normally go back to e to the negative 2t, but we're going to go to 2t minus 1, minus 1 over 9, e to the negative 3. Normally we go back to 3, but here we go to 3, negative 3t minus 1. And then plus 2u of t minus 3, and then basically everything is the same inside the parentheses except instead of t minus 1 we have t minus 3. So negative 5 over 36 times 1 plus 1 over 6 times t minus 3 plus 1 over 4 times e to the negative 2 t minus 3 minus 1 over 9 e to the negative 3 t minus 3. And that is our inverse Laplace transform, which is really a piecewise function. So that's our solution to our differential equation. Um, so I see Caleb's question says, shouldn't it be t plus a so let's write it out, the inverse transform, basically part A says Laplace inverse of e to the negative as times f of s equals u of t minus a f of t minus a. So it's the first form of the second translation theorem is what we're using here. So in this one, it's t minus a in both. <clears throat> not sure if that uh, kind of clears that up or not, Caleb. So our solution itself is actually a piecewise function. It has a, you have a different solution over different intervals. So the solution itself is a piecewise function. Well, that makes sense because of the piecewiseness to our function f of t. So the solution is itself 
a piecewise function. Oh. That was uh, that was that was nasty. I mean, we didn't even go through the whole partial fraction decomposition, and it was still still nasty. So, next section, <laughs> seven point four, the second part of our operational properties. So more operational properties. For Laplace transforms. The first one is called uh, derivatives of the transform. So derivatives of a transform. And basically it says that Laplace of t to the n times f of t equals negative 1 to the n times the nth derivative of capital F of S. And here, capital F of S is just the Laplace transform of F. So the plus of little f of t would just be capital F of S if we were not multiplying it by t to the n. So basically, you end up taking derivatives of your Laplace transform capital F of S if you multiply by t to the n. And I think this uh, proof would go with uh, integration by parts, but again, I might do a separate video and, and show this in detail uh, once I work through it. But let's just look at an example here. Example, let's say find plus transform of t cosine t. So that's one we kind of uh, said was in the chart, but let's derive it without using the definition. Let's use this uh, derivative of a transform formula right here. And here n is a positive uh, integer. So n greater or equal than zero is an integer. So we don't know how to take fractional derivatives in this class. So solution. Here we have n equals 1. So Laplace of t to the 1 cosine t is going to equal negative 1 to the 1 first derivative of s over s squared plus 1. All right, Laplace of cosine t. We'll say since Laplace of cosine t be equal to uh, s over s squared plus 1. Now we have to take a derivative of a quotient, which is the quotient rule. So this is going to equal negative 1 times quotient rule. is going to be 1 times s squared plus 1 minus s times 2s over s squared plus 1 squared, and that's from the quotient rule. For derivative. And we can simplify that would tell us that uh, Laplace of t cosine t would be equal to, let's see, we keep that negative 1, s squared plus 1 minus 2s squared over s squared plus 1 squared. We'll just leave the denominator like that. And I think this is going to turn into, let's see if we multiply that, negative 2s squared plus s squared is negative s squared. It's going to be s squared minus 1 over s squared plus 1 squared. 
and that is our Laplace transform of t cosine t. And that's the same thing we had in the chart. So that feels good. Got the same thing. So that would be how we could get Laplace of t cosine t. And then we could take that one and multiply it by an exponential and use the, uh, you know, use the first translation theorem and shift it and do all kind of cool stuff. So, or we could multiply it by, you know, step function or whatever. So we can mix and match all these, <laughs> these uh, operational properties. So just uh, be aware, things could get a little involved. Just kind of think about what we could do with that. Um, so follow up would be t squared cosine t. So let's do t squared cosine t example. Find Laplace of t squared cosine t. So I'll give you guys a second to work on this, um, ask questions, whatever. Um, catch up. So here, basically, n equals 2. So here, Laplace of t squared cosine t would be negative 1 squared times the second derivative of s over s squared plus 1. And what did we do? We just found the first derivative, so d by ds of s over s squared plus 1 except we had an extra negative. So the first derivative by itself is 1 minus s squared over s squared plus 1 squared. So um, the extra negative from the last problem made it s squared minus 1. Well, we don't have that extra negative here, so we just have 1 minus s squared in the numerator. So that's the first derivative. So then what's the second derivative? Well, I have to use a quotient rule again. So then I want to do d by ds of this, so the second derivative of f of s will be equal to the first derivative of 1 minus s squared over s squared plus 1 squared. So it's another quotient rule, so quotient rule again. And now, uh, it's a little more involved when I take the derivative of the denominator for the second part of the quotient rule. So this is going to equal, let's see, negative 2s times s squared plus 1 squared minus 1 minus s squared. Now to do the derivative at the bottom, you do 2 times s squared plus 1 times 2s because it's like a chain rule, or it is a chain rule over s squared plus 1 squared squared and simplify. So let's see, to simplify this we're going to get negative 2s times s squared plus 1 squared and let's see, minus 4 s 
minus 4s cubed times s squared plus 1 over s squared plus 1 to the 4. And let's see, what else can we do? We can simplify this even further. Simplify this even further to let's see, negative. Simplifies to negative 2s times s squared plus 1 squared. Plus 4s times s squared minus 1 all over s squared plus 1 cubed. Oops, this one's no longer squared because I canceled one of them. And then this will simplify to negative 2s cubed minus 6s over s squared plus 1 cubed. And so that is Laplace of t squared cosine t. So I'll just have a little cancellation here. And factor out that 4s distributed the negative. In there. So that's kind of how I got from there to there. And that is quite involved. But now we can find transforms of you know, harder stuff, stuff that's not in the chart, stuff that I told you not to worry about because we can actually do it different ways. And this is kind of how we do that. So, I know it's pretty involved, a little tedious. Hang in there, get some practice. It's gonna be, you're gonna be okay. I'm pretty sure you guys are uh, rocking it. So, hang in there, you're gonna be okay. Any questions before we wrap up? I'm gonna stop here. We'll finish up 7.4 next time. So, 7.4. We still have to do convolution, um, in integral equations, periodic functions, and then we'll get into the uh, Dirac delta function next time as well. So Thursday we'll be through, probably done with 7.5, which is the end of chapter 7. So planning to finish up chapter 7 by Thursday. I think we have another exam next Tuesday. So then we'll get into chapter 8 next week, finish it up the following week, and then final exam the week after that. So um, we'll have a, I think we'll have an exam, yeah, maybe the Thursday before, review Tuesday, final exam Thursday. I think that's roughly the schedule. So hang in there. It's going to be good. Um, you guys are killing it. So just, uh, just keep keep working hard. Keep uh, Keep asking good questions. I can tell you guys are putting in a lot of time so it's gonna pay off just hang in there if there are no questions I'll see you guys on Thursday have a good afternoon talk to you later Yeah, that's definitely true. Like you can make one little mistake at the beginning and then it just follows you all the way through. So that's exactly right.
it's a little tedious. Um, just be super, super careful. Take your time. Yeah. Try to get some practice in so you know how much time to kind of budget. Just really focus on those details. Really focus on taking your time, making sure you don't make a little mistake. For sure, obviously, I'm I'm not having my A game today, so made a start off. That just I think that kind of screwed me up starting off winging it. That was bad. So, but yeah, hang in there. It'll be good. I'm sure, you guys will do fine. <laughs>